Okay, turn your Bibles to the book of Luke in the second chapter. <clears throat> this is, of course, a couple of days now before Christmas. Uh, on Sunday, we preached out the other scriptures that has the Christmas story. The book of Matthew gives the story, of course, Mary and Joseph and the birth, but also the wise men. And uh, Randy had read uh, this part of the Christmas story on Sunday, so we're going to use a message from it, the way the Lord <clears throat> gave me a different thought on it. Uh, if I can get it out the way that I feel uh, He gave it to me. Book of Luke in the second chapter, beginning in verse 9. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 9, Luke 2. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace good will toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, <clears throat> They made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And they, all they that heard it, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her, her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen that was told unto them. May be seated, let us pray. <coughs> Lord, we thank you. We love you. Thank you, God, for this on purpose gathering. God, to proclaim your word and proclaim the birth of Jesus Christ. That he came into the world to save sinners, and Paul would say who was the chief. But God, you loved us when we were unlovable, and you died for us when we were still in sin. And God, as the Bible says, for a righteous man, some would dare to die, but you died for us while we were yet sinners. So God, what a great love. We thank you. Lord, for this time of year and the things that go on in peace and oftentimes wars have stopped for a day. Lord, to just recognize the birth or recognize the peace of Christmas in your birth. So we thank you. We love you. Praying God, you may anoint physically that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh. But above all, God, we ask you anoint Spiritually, spiritually, you may preach the, that we may preach the word of the power of the Spirit, tying together the loose ends of filling the voids we live because of our inability. Let thy word go out freely. We thank you. We love you. Apply the message to our hearts, and let your name be praised. In thy name, we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> From this, uh, verse twenty, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God. For all the things that they have heard and seen as it was told unto them. What we want to preach on for a short time is what we take with us. What we take with us. Now there's been countless books and articles and songs and etc. written about the giving and receiving of gifts. And the greatest gifts and the good gifts and how all these things have been uh, written over and over and over again. So sometimes that we as people or some people may shop for gifts out of love and appreciation. They want the special gift because of their love and appreciation for the person they're buying for. In some cases they may shop for gifts out of obligation. You might have drew a name and you might just be shopping out of obligation 
And however you may shop though, whatever the reason we give, amen, whatever the reason we give a gift will probably determine what we take back with us after we deliver our gifts. Our gifts. Yeah, amen. The reason I give it, the reason I had taken up, the reason I wanted to give up, amen, the reason, uh, and we see that when you give a gift, uh, the Bible speaks uh, that it's better to give than receive it, kind of out of the blue it says that, uh, uh, but it's uh, good to give, uh, and the only reason I can understand that may be because a little difficult to explain, but in giving, you have a choice, uh, you have a choice to give, uh, you want to give a gift to someone, and sometimes receiving, uh, you don't always have a choice. You simply have a need that you cannot furnish, that you need food or you need clothing. You don't have the ability to furnish or to buy it and be able to give to someone and you be able to help them. That's a blessing. Now it's a blessing to receive. I realize that. That's why it's a little hard to me to explain. But the blessing is if you have the ability to give and you want to use that ability to give, that's a a blessing when you want to do something good in other words yeah, yeah amen christ gave <laughs> Christ gave. How blessed it was that Christ gave. Uh, amen. Uh, that He gave His all. Uh, but, uh, but when we give something, uh, we can also take something back with us. Uh, it may be a smile on the face. Uh, it may be a joy. Uh, it may be a thank you. Uh, amen. You're not given to receive monetary gains uh, or receive uh, uh, like gains. Uh, but the reason we give, uh, I want to take something with me when I give. Mm -hmm. I want to take something with me in the spiritual realm when I give. <clears throat> now one of the greatest uh, joys of giving is seeing the positive action, uh, the positive attitude, uh, amen, uh, of those receiving. Uh, it's so wonderful you give a gift. Uh, and someone uh, likes that gift. They smile. They thank you. Uh, as people uh, have given to us uh, again this Christmas season. Uh, I appreciate uh, all that's been given. Uh, and I thoroughly uh, mean that. I appreciate the love uh, and the uh, compassion or the uh, just wanting to recognize. Uh, I appreciate that grace. Uh, and I, I always want to show a positive attitude uh, not just to show uh, I have one uh, and I want to proclaim that I want to that's like I always thank people that work in dinners and work in organizing a, a, a church function or organizing a, a revival or, or doing all these things. I appreciate it uh, because I've done those things. Uh, I appreciate uh, all those things. I always want to show that, uh, but I don't just show it. Uh, I so I can say, look, uh, I did my obligation. Uh, oh, my love. Uh, I want to show the appreciation. Uh, uh, so when someone receives the gift and you give them the gift and they really appreciate it, it really makes you feel good. Whereas if you give somebody the opposite way, <laughs> they look at it and you put a lot of time and effort into it. They look at it and they throw it aside and complain or grumble. How do you like that? It's all right. If you like those sort of things, it's all right. That doesn't leave you with anything to take away from their heart. It doesn't leave you a positive attitude. Uh, oh my, I'm glad that I, 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 it's great when you give somebody something. Uh, amen. Uh, now when we just give uh, uh, with a desire and love, uh, amen, uh, what we take away uh, is often worth far more. Uh, Amen. Uh, and what we gave away uh, is to work a lifetime of blessing sometimes. Sometimes your mind can go by to something you give for somebody. I knew someone, uh, I won't name the name, they're still living in fact, but they would always every year uh, donate quite a bit of money when we did. Uh, at, at times we do 30 or 40 Christmas baskets. He always donated a lot of money. Uh, he said the reason I do this, uh, for a fair amount of money, uh, he said when I was little, uh, somebody from church brought us one time uh, an orange and an apple and a couple of little things. Uh, he said we didn't have nothing. Uh, he said I've never forgotten that. Uh, he, uh, he grew up and, and worked and had a good job Lord, but he never forgot that. Uh, he was still giving back. Uh, I still wanted to help someone else. Uh, uh, to have a Christmas meal uh, or to have something special. And many times you find people uh, that do that. 
uh, they receive the gift. Uh, and oh, they want to give. Uh, then the people that give, if you give out love uh, and give out uh, a desire, uh, that what you take away is so wonderful. Amen. So wonderful. It's worth a lifetime of blessings and joy so often. So no wonder it's blessed to be able to give. No wonder it's blessed. Now, when we apply the same idea to the gift giving, amen, unto Jesus Christ who died for us, who gave us the greatest gift of all time. Amen. So we apply that. He gave us the gift of salvation. If we'll ask and if we'll repent, we can receive the gift of salvation. Hey, just for asking and repenting, how can we not bring unto Him praise? How can we not bring unto Him praise? The Bible said by Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. That is a fruit of our, our, our lips, giving thanks to His name. Oh, in Hebrews, Hebrews 13 and 15, what a joy we take with us when we praise Him. So when I give to Christ, what do I take with me? Oh, you take home the joy. <laughs> You take home that night on the way home uh, the joy uh, and the blessing you received uh, because you gave uh, unto the Lord. Uh, because you gave unto the Lord. Uh, oh, why I take away from the story. Uh, I hear the Christmas story uh, of the angel uh, and the heavenly multitude. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, proclaiming uh, that Jesus Christ is born. Uh, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes uh, and lying uh, in a manger. Uh, what do I take away from this? Uh, and I said Sunday, uh, one of my favorite verses always uh, in Christmas plays, uh, and there was in the same country shepherds uh, abiding in the uh, keeping watch, uh, abiding in the field keeping watch uh, over their flock by night, uh, and lo, the angel of the Lord came. Uh, they may have borne them the glory of the Lord shone around about them uh, and they were sore afraid. Uh, oh, what did I take away from this? Uh, I take away the fact that the king of kings uh, and they sell unto him uh, and the angel sell unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings uh, a great joy uh, I wish I be to all people. Uh, well, what did I take from that? Uh, the blessing uh, the, uh, the heavenly host uh, was willing to make the announcement uh, yes. uh, to lowly shepherds Oh, I, I know that once uh, I realized he made the announcement to the whole uh, uh, lowly shepherds uh, that he loves me. Uh, I don't care what the devil says. Uh, I don't care what the enemy tries to say. Uh, uh, when I don't think things are going right. Uh, when I see others uh, uh, that seem like they're having an easier life uh, or whatever may be the case. Uh, I said, devil, you might as well get around. Uh, I know the Lord loves me. Uh, he came and made the greatest announcements. Uh, yeah. Announcement that's ever been made. Huh? There's no other announcement huh? that ever be made compared to this. Huh? He said the very last one, huh? and the trumpet of God shall sound. Yeah. Hey, uh, that will be the greatest of all announcements. Huh? A time shall be no more. Huh? All but until that time, huh? this is the greatest announcement ever made. The Savior is born. Yeah. I take from that such a blessing that He loves us. He loves us no matter who we are. Shepherds were not high up who in the world uh, would think about announcing the birth uh, of the greatest king to ever be. Uh, an announcement uh, uh, to the shepherds. Uh, oh, uh, they would never be the ones on the on the uh, the list to invite. Uh, oh, uh, not the special guests. Uh, oh, but with God, they were special guests. Uh, that night, uh, the only one that came to the manger to see invite. Uh, the wise men we know came uh, at least some time later. Uh, a few days or a few weeks or a few months we don't know but they came a little bit later oh but the ones that he invited to the manger scene was shepherds oh what a lovely and we know God's relationship with shepherds David everything based on David seemed like down through his line Judah would have someone on the throne and then Christ would be through the lineage of David David was a shepherd Christ is a shepherd he said others 
their sheep I have, not of this flock. So the Gentiles, even then, was considered they were going to be sheep. Also the Jews that were the sheep. Oh, he loves the lowly. I appreciate that. They started telling their story. They went and they saw the baby. Then they started telling their story. Amen. They came with haste in verse 17. When they see it, they made known a brother said it which have told them concerning this child. Oh, you see, they took something with them. They came to see a baby. Oh, but can you imagine a lifetime of blessing? Oh, can you imagine every time they hear about Christ healing someone? They say, let me tell you, I know I told you before. I know you heard this before. Oh, but we was on a country Side. <laughs> we was watching over our sheep. Let me tell you what happened. An angel appeared. And then after that, a heavenly host appeared. They invited us. They wanted us to go see this baby born in Bethlehem. Lying in a manger. They told it over and over and over again, I'm sure. Amen. Boy, did they take something with them. Boy, did they take something back with them. Huh? And we won't go to the wise men, but the wise men, huh? we will just uh, a little bit the wise men. Huh? We know the story. They came huh? and saw the babe huh? and gave them gifts of gold, huh? a friendship and myrrh, huh? a frankincense and myrrh, huh? and they worshiped. Huh? And then they've been warned of God in a dream. Huh? They should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country. Another way, what did they take with them? They gave gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Oh, but what did they take with them? They took a lifetime of blessings. I guarantee you they heard about this child again. Yes. I, I guarantee you uh, they realized this is the one uh, they brought the gift to. Uh, this is one they can't, uh, 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 came many, many, many miles. Uh, if it's where they think it was, it would be like going from here to the Colorado almost uh, on camels. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, oh, but they went many miles. Uh, oh, but they took a lot more with them uh, than a little bit of gold uh, and a little bit of French sense. Uh, and a little bit more. They took a lot more back. They have a lifetime of stories. Oh, then we find out in verse 19, and Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Can you imagine how she felt? It's a young, very young woman. Very young. All the things that happened. The angels had came to her and told her to be overshadowed and be conceived by the Holy Spirit. So they go, she has a baby. Everything hasn't went right, don't seemingly, at least in our eyes, uh, at this point. Uh, amen. Because uh, they're put out in a manger. That doesn't mean the innkeeper was uh, mean. Uh, we, people usually portray him that. Uh, he simply didn't have room uh, in the end. Uh, he might have been very kind and said, Look, uh, I don't have anything. Uh, it's very full. I can't throw him out. Uh, oh, but I got a stable out here. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be okay. Uh, Amen. I, I don't know how he acted or how he reacted, uh, but he gave him a room. Uh, amen. Uh, in a manger. Uh, oh, uh, but Mary, uh, I pondered all these things. Now, uh, here comes the shepherds. Uh, and they said, let me tell you what just happened. Uh, there's an angel up here from heaven. Uh, oh, and after that, uh, and every one of us saw that. Uh, then there was a multitude, uh, a heavenly host, uh, uh, telling us to come here, uh, uh, telling us where we'll find the babe, uh, and telling us, uh, that he's a savior, amen. Hey, uh, the seed of David, savior, uh, he's Christ the Lord. Amen. Wow, if I was a young mother, I'd be pondering. What did the shepherds see when they got there? They saw a very young mother, saw a very poor mother, and a very poor father in a stable. And yet the whole of heaven has announced to them, this is Christ. <laughs> Amen. All the heaven have announced them. No wonder Mary uh, would ponder these things in her heart. She couldn't have a clue uh, of what was going to go on. Uh, she didn't have a clue uh, of what Jesus was going to do. Uh, he was still a babe. Uh, amen. Uh, didn't have a clue. Uh, oh, uh, but I tell you, uh, I bet there's first. Uh, then we don't know anything about Christ except when he turned 12, he uh, 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 teaching uh, and listening and they're answering questions uh, of them in the temple. 
devil, uh, but we know nothing else about it until they started to be baptized uh, uh, by John the Baptist. Uh, oh, but she always pondered these things in her heart. Uh, always pondered. Uh, oh, this is Christ the Lord. Uh, nothing's happened yet. It's been 30 years and nothing's really happened that we have recorded. Because the very plain it said the first miracle was in Cain. Yeah. So he didn't do miracles from zero up to twelve or twelve up to thirty. Yeah. But she pondered these things, kept them in her heart. So the shepherd left glorifying God. Amen. The shepherd left, it said, and the shepherd returned glorifying and praising God. Look what they took with them. Verse 20, they left glorifying uh, and praising God for all the things they heard uh, and seen uh, as it was told them. Now, uh, uh, very quickly, uh, what do we take uh, with us uh, when we give of ourselves to Christ? What do we take with us? Uh, hey, uh, what do we take with us uh, when we ponder Christ's birth? Uh, I take a peace. Uh, I take a loving. Uh, I take a wonderful God. Uh, I take the amazing uh, a doctrine of the amazing how the Bible ties together. Uh, that he had to be born of a virgin. Uh, 700 years before it was going to pass, uh, he's going to be born of a virgin. Uh, I take that with me. Uh, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Uh, I take with me uh, all the promises uh, that are on Jesus Christ. Uh, he had to be born of a virgin so uh, he would be without sin. Uh, he had to keep himself without sin, uh, uh, born into the world uh, uh, without any death, uh, any sin in his life. Uh, and he kept himself without sin. What do I ponder? I, I see the birth of Christ. I, I see manger scene. Every time I see manger scene, I like them. Amen. I like them. I'm always, and I've said this over and over, I marvel that God came up with the idea of a manger scene. Right. Born in a manger. It wouldn't be near as peaceful. Oh, I'm glad they didn't have a room that night. It wouldn't have been, I'm glad it wasn't in a gold palace. It wouldn't have been more a mere a, a, a inviting if I saw a, a picture of a, a, a hotel door or a motel door, amen, or see something a, a born a, and see all the greatness and all those things. Oh, it's so inviting. As I said, no other place I know of can be so inviting to all generations as a stable. Very rich people go to the stables. They own very wealthy animals many times. Very wealthy people go to the stable quite often. Still do. Very poor people sometimes work in stables. Yep. Always have, always do. And all in between. <laughs> What a plan God had. Amen. What an amazing plan. Uh, amen. Uh, inclusive. Uh, amen. Uh, that whosoever will. Uh, I'm glad for that. Uh, that's what I uh, take with us. Uh, uh, when I ponder the birth of Christ, uh, I think of all uh, the amazing uh, things that God put together uh, uh, to have him born in a manger, uh, have him born of a woman, uh, but have him born of a virgin, uh, have him born without sin. Uh, what an amazing God we have. Now what do I take with me? Well, I look at an empty cross and an empty tomb. I look at an empty cross. I see this quite often. On the American flag, you have the eagle symbol, very wonderful symbol of freedom and, and beauty and strength. On the Christian flag, we have a cross, which would be not a symbol of freedom in any other way except for one thing. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Yes. No other reason that would be a symbol of peace. No other reason a, a tomb a, would be a symbol a, a, of peace. Oh, a, but we have an empty cross a, and we have an empty tomb. A, a, it's a symbol a, of the power of God. A, and I take with me the blessing. A, I take with me, oh, a, He died for me. A, I never get over that. A, it's not something I just quote. It's something I just say. A, I'm amazed a, that He died for me a, and died for you. I'm amazed that he died while we were as sinners. I'm amazed that he just didn't wipe out the world and start another world that will obey him. Oh, but he died for all of us. What did I take with him? When I came and gave my heart to Jesus Christ, or when I go to a church time after time, what did I take with me? If I give myself to God, if I give him a song, if I give him a prayer, if I give him a praise, if I give him a, a, a 
up front or whatever. Uh, oh, I take with me. I, I don't leave it there. I, I take it when I leave. Uh, oh, I take blessings uh, and I take joy. Uh, when the shepherd came, uh, they took back praise uh, and glory. Uh, and no doubt the wise men also took back uh, a wonderful lifetime story uh, of praise. Uh, uh, how they saw this one you're talking about. Uh, uh, 30 years later, uh, you're talking about those that are still alive. They said, let me tell you what we saw. Yeah. So, when we give in natural gifts our great love, we search diligently of that which we can afford to give to someone. We take by blessing when we see the joy of them receiving. As I said last week, when people say it don't seem like Christmas, I said, well, find someone that needs something and give them something. Find someone that needs something and give them something. It will seem like Christmas. It's the joy. Oh, but we take back with us the joy and the blessings. And I'm glad that when we give to Christ, we take back with us joys and blessings. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You. We love You. Pray, God, You may take these words and apply them to our hearts. Lord God, that we may proclaim Thy name above all names. Thank You, Lord, for this season. Thank You, Lord, for all the blessings and joys you've given us God and all the people that has given and we thank you Lord for the love and the kindness that has shown God we pray that this may be a blessing to someone Lord not only when we put it when Daniel puts it on the YouTube but God down through the years God we thank you that people can draw on these and Lord you'll have it always at the right time at the right place for the right need we thank you and we love you in thy name we pray, dear Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God.